Here we are for the fans forum. Here's Carl. Yeah, looking forward to this one because Matty Tyler started to turn the club round and uh, we've got back a team we can walk down the high street and be proud of at last. I oh, know, yeah. The joy's returning. Right then, before we get started, we've got a bit of a funny story from Carl. Yeah, 1970 71, I think it was, we drew Liverpool in the FA Cup at Anfield. It was a very, very foggy night. Um, referee came out and you could see from the halfway line to the cops so the game went ahead. Yeah. Uh, Warsaw lost 5 2, but I didn't see the initial goals, just the weather. <laughs> Welcome back to Warsaw Fan TV. Last night I was at the uh, fans forum, but also in this video we're going to talk about FA Cup. We've got uh, Swindon at home, and then the preview of our match tomorrow night against Forest Green Rovers in the uh, Papa John Trophy. But first up, I took some questions. I did sort of present them before giving them uh, due diligence and all that. As a general overview, there's a lot more structure in place in Warsaw than I think there's ever been. Uh, Jamie Fullerton, he's a big part of that, and uh, we haven't seen much of him, but behind the scenes, he is really putting a marvellous sort of structure and process in place for every every part of the football club and every part of the development of the club. Actually, I had a chat with Jamie Fullerton after the uh, forum while we were waiting uh, the long wait for the uh, cup draw. And I was very impressed with him. I was very impressed with him. Again, he sort of talked about the structure and process and putting procedures in place for every part of the football club and with me being from a process engineering background that is sort of something that fits very well with me and it gives us confidence that whatever happens whether a player leaves the manager leaves or he leaves there's a procedure in place that people can follow up with and that's what I've done in my career as a manufacturing uh, in consultant and contractor sort of solving problems and then leaving a procedure in place so uh, people can solve some of their own problems going forward and sort of sustaining. And that's um, that's a big one. But on to the questions. My first question was about George Miller. He's obviously doing very well for us and we know he's out of contract at the end of the season. So my question was what protection have we got to avoid him leaving in January, because he could very well be sold by Barnsley in the January transfer window. And now, uh, is a signing of George Miller uh, a possibility for us? Well, that sort of uh, opened up all the, uh, all the structure and uh, detail that we sort of talked about already. They've got plans in place. If that was to happen, they're looking for the next George Miller and uh, trying to bring in the next George Miller as such. But finances, perhaps, you never know, that might happen, that we might get George on a permanent basis. But if he doesn't, then there's procedures in place where we're going to bring our own talent in from all that scouting and uh, recruiting network that uh, Jamie Fullerton has sort of running effectively. I did ask the question uh, because of my concern, really. I think if George Miller stays with us, I think he's likely to get 30 goals this season, which is a big <laughs> a big slice of the goals we're likely to be scoring. And uh, if we're going to get playoffs and maybe even promotion, then we're going to need somebody that's knocking those goals in. I did raise the question about Elijah Adebayo. And obviously the effect of him leaving, whilst uh, whilst get round about four hundred grand for him was uh, was good business. Not being able to replace him, or rather replacing him with a uh, Del Boy, <laughs> Derek Ossiar, that sort of really didn't fit the brief. I think that kind of thing's in the past now because of the structure and planning that's in place. So that gives me heart for the future. Elijah Adebayo, initially Lee Pomley dodged the question a little bit of whether we've got um, a sell-on clause 
with Elijah Adebayo. Stefan Gamble did actually confirm later on that yes, there is a sell-on clause for Elijah Adebayo. And with the way he's going for Luton, as long as he doesn't turn into a Troy Deeney and stay there for 20 years or whatever, we could have uh, some more money on the way. So that'll be good. So um, another question I asked was about Shay Willock. We got him from Solly or Moors and although only 17, a really hot prospect. But we haven't really seen much of him. But Jamie Fullerton explained that he'd had a few niggling injuries, which had sort of uh, held him back a little bit. But um, he was uh, soon going to be back at it and um, pushing on, as it were. Also asked a question about the screen, which has not worked for the last few days or last few games. That was not, as I reported, because Walsall had dipped below 5,000 in attendance. <laughs> um, they had some uh, a major fault, which uh, took out the hardware. And uh, we're waiting for parts from America to uh, get that fixed and get that up and running. It was sort of part fixed for a fixture last week, but um, not fully. It's sort of uh, well knackered, really. So uh, hoping that's going to get sorted soon. Question was asked about the Saddlers Club. That was on my list. Somebody got in there first. Yeah. Um, it's going to cost about 300 grand to get that up and running. To be a proper Saddlers Club again. But is that the priority for Walsall's funds at the moment? Um, a bigger concern was, of course, obtaining the freehold. And uh, that was discussed. And, of course, getting a, a mortgage agreement where we're paying a similar fee that we're currently paying in rent. That would be a perfect scenario for us. And uh, bringing it all back under the club's banner is uh, a credit to Lee Pomlet. So uh, thank you very much for that. I didn't get my question in about longer contracts, particularly for youth players coming through. But in all fairness, given the conversation I had with Jamie Fullerton after the forum, I've got total confidence that they're all over it. And um, I'm really pleased. Warsaw are moving forward in many ways and uh, it's not just the results on the pitch everything behind the scenes is much more structured now and uh, gives me uh, great confidence in uh, the future for Warsaw. Um, on a separate note I didn't raise this in the fans forum I spoke separately with Paul Joanno because um, I didn't want to sort of embarrass his team as such but I did raise the issue about the videos that they're putting out where the sound keeps dropping out and I suggested previously that they should get a fluffy a fluffy cover for the mic um, which would fix that issue that has now been obtained so that should be given more quality on the, um, the videos that are coming out from Warsaw also the going down the Wensby Road start and finish of all the videos is way out of balance I've talked to him about that so we can correct that so it doesn't sort of burst our eardrums when we're listening on our headphones and that sort of stuff. And then the third point I made is just a courtesy thing, really. When interviewing players, if they fluff their lines as such, um, there's a couple of instances. One last season with uh, Brian Dutton. And um, it, it's very embarrassing for a player or a manager to fluff the words during an interview. But when you've been interviewed by your own club, a little bit of editing is going to save those blushes and make things much more professional. If all of my videos weren't edited, you would see I have no memory and I forget all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so um, it's just courtesy, really, and professionalism to edit out um, mistakes, which is... Uh, but it's took it on board. And um, going forward, have a good relationship, I think, with Paul. So uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, some little bits of inside information. You never know. But uh, that's all within the structure of what he's allowed to do. Next, let's talk about the FA Cup. FA Cup Round 2, Warsaw 
v swindon playing them in the cup just a couple of weeks before they visit us at the banksies it's always a difficult one when you're playing teams very close together um playing two games so close together and very rarely do you win both of them or does one team win both of them which would you prefer warsaw to win the uh cup game or the uh, away game in the league. Hmm. I think the away game in the league, to be honest. But um, getting through to the third round of the cup would be pretty special. So we're interested to know what you think. Which one would you prefer? Obviously, winning both would be nice. But um, that... Um, doesn't often happen. Swindon, of course, Matt Taylor has uh, been there, so he'll be sort of uh, meeting up with them and uh, crossing swords with them, as it were, for the first time since his arrival here. So uh, that's going to be an interesting one. Right then, so FA Cup done. We're now talking Papa John Trophy. Warsaw tomorrow night, play... Forest Green Rovers. Me and Stephen will be there. We're down round about D73, 74 in the main stand. So if you see us down there, come and say hello. What are Warsaw going to do for this? First of all, what's required? Warsaw have already got through the group. Whether finishing top of the group gives us a home tie, I don't know. But I think that is probably the case. But... Warsaw win the group as long as they don't lose after 90 minutes to Forest Green. Forest Green will win the group with a win at Warsaw, but need at least to win on penalties to go through, if it's a draw at the end, obviously. Brighton under-21s will go through if Warsaw beat Forest Green. So that's the stats. What's going to be the team? I would fully expect Jack Rose to um, step in for this one. Also, Tom Leak, expect him to make an appearance. With Zach Mills injured and Joe Folks out at Kidderminster and also injured. Um, who's going to play left back? Is Stephen Ward going to get a break? Or is he going to uh, stay in there? Manny Month, I think he'll still start. But is Rowling going to play and keep our solidity there? Or is Ash Taylor going to get a game? So that's an interesting one. Option, of course, for left back is if uh, Hayden White played left back, perhaps. Or even Tom Leake at left back. So uh, that's an interesting bit. I would like to think that Josh Labadee will be rested for this one. And Sam Perry will get that main berth in the CDM role. And then perhaps Jack Earing alongside him. Or maybe, given there's not so much on the game, maybe Sam Perry, Alfie Bates as CDMs. That would be interesting if that's the case. In the midfield three, are we going to see the Ninja? Are we going to see the Ninja? On the uh, fans forum, they talked about it a little bit, saying uh, Matt Taylor effectively said if the game had been put to bed a little bit more against Kings Lynn, he may have got some minutes. So given this game has not got so much riding on it with Walsh already through, I think we'll see the Ninja out his Khan at some point. Um, I expect probably Shade will play as well. And um, Osadibi is going to want to keep his run in the team, I would think. And uh, give Connor Wilkinson a bit more time. He's going to be out for a couple of weeks with a hamstring strain. Or calf strain, rather, I believe. So, up front, is George Miller going to be up front? Or... Is Kieran Phillips going to get a run out in that role? Interesting. We don't know. We'll see tomorrow. Forest Green, how serious are they taking this competition? They've been knocked out the cup. That was a bit of a shocker for them. They're doing very well in the league, obviously, leading the way. 
Are they going to pay more attention to this cup now they're out the FA Cup? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I think perhaps not. I think they're just going to focus on the league and getting themselves promoted, I would think. But looking forward to the game. It's going to be good. I'm going to get my thermals on because it might be a bit of a chilly one. But, <laughs> but that's it. Nice one. Thanks for watching Waterfan TV. If you haven't already, subscribe. Follow the joy and the pain. But of course, the joy is returning. Thanks for watching.